welcome to Meet the Candidates. Here on this edition, we are covering candidates for the 34th District State Representative seat that's just now open from uh, Mayor Neely now taking office and abdicating his seat. We have a wonderful, wonderful list of guests uh, coming up for you guys this election season. Our first, and probably, to be honest with you, my favorite, <laughs> uh, is here with us here in the studio. Why don't you give the guests, uh, let us know who's here. Hey, Candace, Candace Machette. I am running, like you said, for the 34th District State uh, Representative seat. And you said he abdicated, almost like it's a throne. Yeah. Uh, well, then January 7th, crown me. Yeah. <laughs> How's it going? Good good, 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 good. I mean, politics almost gets to that monarchical <laughs> kind of system, so no. abdicate might be a stretch, but a little close. Yeah, uh, we we're, we're going to keep it a democracy. <laughs> yeah, here yeah, in yeah, exactly. If, if you got anything to say about it, exactly. right? Exactly. So, I, like I was kind of telling you off the camera, I'm more of a type to, I want to get a feel for you. And that's your politics, you as a person, your background, your interests, your hobbies, your secrets. Okay. So, starting off- It wouldn't be a secret. Mm, I don't know, <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll dig and probably see where we get with that one. Um, but starting off with something simple, something easy, mm -hmm. what was your schooling like when you were here in the city? Like, what was your elementary, what was your high school? Well, I'm still in the city. Okay. <laughs> um, but I went to Manly Elementary and I tell people all the time, because in my opinion, let's go Falcons. It was the coolest elementary school ever. And then of course, everybody in the city should have been a knight. Flint Southwestern Academy. Uh, <laughs> Southwestern. Yes. I mean, they're going strong. They're one of the few high schools still left in the city. So. I mean. Yeah. The, the. But go ahead. The. You're right, you're right, you're right. <laughs> but we're going to fix that. Yeah. We're actually going to fix that. I get into office, I'm going to make sure we funnel some more money down here for education. So what what would your plan for that? Because, because I know people were talking in the education realm, mm -hmm. they're talking about a big hub school for mm -hmm. all of uh, the city kids since mm -hmm. our, uh, our residency has dropped so significantly. Mm -hmm. But do you think that's a good idea or do you think it should be more community based, kind of like how the elementaries were? So this is the thing. Funny thing about that, especially when people say that um, our residency has dropped. We've actually had more people move back to Flint lately. And I, I know that's mm. something that a lot of people do not know. But when I worked for the city here recently under our former mayor, Dr. Weaver, that was one of the things that we talked about is the fact that we do have more residents actually coming back to Flint. So mm -hmm. if anything, our demographic is kind of going up. Compared um, to the last census. Correct. Okay. So um, I, I'm excited about that. And more more so than anything, I'm wanting to welcome more people. So when people hear you only have one high school, that might be a little off-putting. Mm -hmm. So I definitely want to work with the Flint Community Schools to see what we can do to make sure that, yes, we have enough room for our current students and um, have a system that they can sustain. But then at the same time, let's think about those new students that are coming in with their parents as more people move into the city. Mm -hmm. Now... I know a hot topic, in, at least in the education realm, has been charter schools. Mm. Charter schools, yeah. Mm. I'm a product of charter you schools. Are. So, I mean, I, I have. I at your charter school yeah, briefly. Yeah, do you? Yeah. So, shout out to International Academy of Flint <laughs> out here doing great things in the city. They've right. been here since 99. So, they were, they were a kind right. of a flagship the charter school when mm. everything was really starting with that policy. But, shouts out to them. Uh, but, yes, yeah, so do you think charter schools are a way for the state to kind of clean up the mess that is the Flint public school system or just the community school just system so in general? So this is the thing, as a project, as a product of community schools, I'm mm. always going to advocate to have community schools. I, I think that um, if given the proper uh, financial support, mm. community schools can can flourish. And then I, this is a product of a, a community school. So I, I'm definitely an advocate of community schools. And I understand because there was some concerns that parents had about the standard of education that children might have been getting in those schools that, um, you know, they wanted to move them somewhere to try to maybe get a different education. I think that um, there have been some concerns with with charter schools especially as far as maybe how uh they don't necessarily keep the students after they receive money for them on count days mm -hmm. uh and so and then they just send them right back to the flint community schools where now you have the child but you don't have the uh funding, funding that for that child yeah. so um I, again i'm an advocate for community schools okay yeah okay and so we are also talking about this a little off the scene disney plus Oh. It's it's a it's this kind of cool I see thing. Kids, Disney, yeah, gotcha. kids, Disney. You know, I'm just kind of going <laughs> with the flow. But um, 
Disney's been a big part of like everybody's lives if you've lived here in the US, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Whether it was Pinocchio, Bambi, Dumbo, uh, Fantasia, or even like new school movies like Lion King or Frozen or Moana. Or, you, you know, call Lion like, King new school? It's not, I need it's you not, to know that but Lion King came out. It is old school. It was old. I, I was, it came out when I was born. <laughs> it came out when I was born. But. I mean, I consider it new age because it's not that old school mm. Disney. Like, I don't know. Right. I consider, It's like Mickey Mouse, Goofy. That's old school. That's Anything. very old school. Yeah, that yeah. might be Paul's school. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but it's, it's it, I mean, it's it, everybody has fond memories with Disney. Mm -hmm. And now that they have this platform where all their collection is now just available online, it's kind of cool and it's made people nostalgic. So I know you said you have the service. I do have Disney Plus. I do. What was the first thing you went to? The first thing. Recess. Recess school. Recess was out. the very first okay. thing I watched when okay. I went on Disney Plus. Yes. That was that was a great show. Mm -hmm. Now, why why did you go to that one? Like what made you pick Recess? Oh my god. Well, I think I was in middle school when it came out, so. Mm -hmm. But um absolutely loved the show. It was just a really good show. Mm -hmm. So, it's, and it's just one of those things when I saw it, I was like, "Oh, cool." And it's hard to find recess anywhere else. I think you can find it on YouTube, mm -hmm. but then to be able to watch it continuously without the commercials and everything, perfect. I got to ask, now were you the Randall? I was not a snitch. Okay, I'm just I, I just I had had to ask, had to ask, you know. <laughs> he had his notepad ready. He did. He did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He had it ready. No, so No, I think I was um I was like I was kind of like TJ. Okay. But then I might have been hmm you want to uh, guess it all? You want like a little bookworm at all? Uh, Nothing like that. Might have been a little Gretchen, but Gretchen is really advanced. Yeah, she so, is. So, that's a tough act to follow. Yeah. You know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, growing up in the city, there were a lot, I feel that there were a lot more things for us to kind of do as kids as kind of compared to now, like we've gotten, we've really clamped down with internet and social media and like learning, uh, like people hanging out with random people. It's kind of, it's kind of been more uh, clamped down on than mm -hmm. back when we were kids. But what were some of the things I guess you looked forward to in the city that aren't really maybe around anymore that you'd kind of like to see brought back? So this is the thing. Growing up, I always heard about how much fun Flint was for my parents Same. and all the cool things that they mm -hmm. had to do. Um, I think by the time that we came along, got a little older, mm -hmm. uh, times had changed, um, uh, the job market changed mm -hmm. in Flint. So a lot of the things that we did in Flint, um, we kind of made our own fun. So you had a kid who had uh, a baseball bat and a glove and some baseball. So we would go out and play in the field and just randomly play baseball. We had all kind of basketball courts everywhere, so we'd go play basketball. I mean, mm -hmm. like you said, there's a difference. Mm -hmm. Kids nowadays tend to sit and be on computers. We were outside. Mm -hmm. We would play kickball. We would make up things to do. I think as far as things to look forward to, though, the big 4th of July celebrations downtown, um, those were still around when I was a child, so that was kind of fun mm -hmm. to go do. Um, I'm just trying to think. Um, I think more so than anything, we kind of created our own fun. Mm -hmm. But I think one of the things that's really cool uh, now, if you look around the city, there are a lot more playgrounds and stuff. Mm -hmm. So kids can get back to going outside. You just mm -hmm. got to take those devices from them and stuff. And I think that um, there are more activities that have come back that kids can kind of do as well. But I, I think we need to work on that, though. I think mm -hmm. so. I think when I uh, get to uh, the state representative, see, we'll see what we can kind of funnel resources or maybe companies this way to mm -hmm. do fun, cool, interactive outside things. Things for children to do. Did you see, talking about outdoor activities, did you see the new court that Burston got? I did, I did. Uh, now, I believe it was donated by Kyle Kuzma, mm -hmm. was it? Yes. Because I saw it was in the Laker color, so mm -hmm. I figured, I was like, ah, there's gotta be a correlation mm -hmm. there. I don't know, I think, uh, I, I was um, kind of messing with BB, because you know, he's also one of those uh, purple people, oh, as far he? as fraternities go. Okay. Oh, so, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, but yeah, I think it is maybe so following along the lines of the Lakers. Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I wasn't sure. I just mm -hmm. saw the color scheme, and I was like, oh, that'd be, that's kind of cool right. if they did it that way. But yeah, so now we've got people like Kyle who are like great mm -hmm. icons for the city. We have people like Carissa who are great icons Absolutely for the city. The we have Candace who's great <laughs> uh, influences for the city. But now that we have like really, even even to a lesser degree, but like still on the national level, we have people like Eric Mays who mm -hmm. are like national icons to the city. So with the city being in like such a spot like across the board mm -hmm. from sports to politics, even Little Miss Flint and our activism, you know, putting light on the water crisis, we have old to young really just kind of shining out through mm -hmm. the city. So 
do you think the Flint has a potential to be a, a mover and shaker as far as um, activism and things like that? That are you kidding me? Absolutely. You okay. actually just explained it yourself. Okay. I think one of the coolest things, and let's be clear, Flint is no stranger to being on the public spotlight. Because if you think about it, we're the home of the sit-down strike. We changed the labor movement for the country as we know it. Found you it? Know? The UAW exactly. found it here? Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we're no strangers to this. I think what happened in recent years, again, because of the job market changing, there was a decline. And so I think people kind of forgot like the former glory because keep them, our public schools used to be a model. Other schools would come and learn from us. So this is not like anything that Flint has been a stranger to. We are used to being on the national stage. It just so happens the thing that propelled us there lately was a water crisis. And if I've had anything to say about it, our comeback from that water crisis will be the new thing that propels us. But like you said, um, I believe your question was, do you think that we can do anything for activism? We've changed the way that this country looks at and views infrastructure and water. No doubt that we've changed it. And a lot of that came from our grassroots groups. Mm -hmm. A lot of that came from our grassroots activists. So mm -hmm. the answer to your question is absolutely, we're already doing it. Mm -hmm. We're already doing and it. Let's, uh, to, let's kind of dive into that deeper. So you were a part of that with mm -hmm. the last administration with Karen. And you were really a water warrior going with her, putting the limelight for the city. But even, I, I did. I did. I traveled around the country with her. Right. Absolutely. So, making sure so that. So what kind um, of insights can you give us on that mm -hmm. kind of thing? Like So people are still concerned about Flint, let's be very clear. Mm -hmm. They're still asking. Um, they're, they're still wanting to know how they can help. What needs to be done? Mm -hmm. So it's not like they're just done with Flint. I think a lot of it is they are not sure sure how to help us so that you have those people that come here trying to figure out how to help us. I mean, you, you have Jaden Smith who's kind of figured out, you know, that we still need water. And so he's what he's delivered his fourth water fourth. box. Yep. And I, I'll say even before I started working for Dr. Weaver, I actually remember I worked in the House of Representatives. Mm -hmm. And so from there, um, busy, I, busy, I was already busy, busy. exactly. So from there, I was already doing the work, if you will, and not just around water, um, but just different legislative activities while um, I was in Lansing. And I had a chance to go and lobby. I've lobbied Congress several times at this point. It's so uh -huh. funny that uh, the little things that you learn how to do from elementary your high school and everything, you never think when you grow up, wow, I'm going to sit in front of Congress, I'm going to lobby on behalf of my city, mm -hmm. I'm going to tell them we need safe, affordable drinking water, and that we have an infrastructure problem. But again, I, I had an opportunity to do that, and before the water crisis even happened, you know, um, I I again, I was working and volunteering, so I I I've been on it for quite some time now. So, hold, uh, we've been having a great conversation okay. so far. I'm gonna let us just state and think about a, little, a couple things. We're gonna go on break. Guys, hold where you are because we're gonna be right back with more. and you haven't graduated from high school? Are you over the age of 30 and you're having problems with basic reading and math calculations? And you need to return to school but you're afraid of the traditional classroom setting? Are you over the age of 50 and you're having problems finding a job because you don't know how to use a computer? Well, don't worry, T Adult Skills Center is here for you. We work with adults age 25 years of age and older in basic reading, math, GD prep, and computer training. Young men of color come up from the gloom of national neglect you have already been paid for. Come out of the shadow of irrational prejudices. You owe no racial debt to history. The blood of our bodies and the prayers of our souls have bought for you a future without
without shame, bright beyond the telling of it. Kwanzaa means access. It means access to your soul. It means access to your people. Kwanzaa is like renewing your annual membership to community, to your family, to your culture, and most importantly, to yourself. Kwanzaa is expressed throughout the world now by people of African heritage who want to have that cultural connectedness. These are principles of what we're supposed to be doing 365, you know what I mean, and how we treat each other and how we look at the world. We did not petition or ask for permission to celebrate. We did it by Kuji Jakuli, a self-determination. Welcome back to Meet the Candidates. Again, for this series, we're covering uh, candidates for the 34th District State Rep Representative seat. Uh, here with me, we have Candace Machette. She's been killing it, having fun with us, and we really appreciate the time, you, uh, you taking the time to come and talk with us. And let us know about your platform. Let us know about you as a person. Like, I feel candidates still don't do that anymore. They don't let us know who they are. Mm. Um, I don't know when was the last so in the last ele uh, in the last presidential election or just in elections in general because we, we've talked about you being involved in elections how do you find your information for candidates so uh, this there's this interesting thing called the internet right 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 and right. sometimes it's full of information sometimes it's good information sometimes it's bad information but I, I do a lot of research like lots of research and then not only that but um, with this current uh, March into 2020 that we have going on there are a lot of debates that are going on mm -hmm. so I try to make sure that I watch every single debate to mm -hmm. uh, kind of see which what the candidates are saying and where they stand on issues mm -hmm. I think that and and that's the one thing candidates want you to hear their platform they want you to hear what they'd like to do for you so I think that if you search for that information you will be able to find it and at this point in time there's lots of literature going around everywhere and every candidate again 2019 has a website like for instance CandiceMachette.com mm -hmm. C-A-N-D-I-C-E-M-U-S-H-A-T-T <laughs> dot com and so or they have a Facebook page Candace right. Machat for State Representative on Facebook mm -hmm. so you know I think there are ways, but I do a lot of research. Okay. I, I definitely research. Okay. That's always good. How do you filter out that good stuff from the bad stuff? Because mm -hmm. I know some stuff is coming from news outlets that, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes give part of the story but not the whole mm -hmm. story, or it's just maybe a quick snippet. So do you have a trick that you maybe share with our viewers? Former public information officer, right? Okay, okay. So you kind of have that thing where you, you understand things about media, mm -hmm. uh, you understand articles, you understand what sources are good sources, what sources are kind of like, kind of bloggish, kind of, um, let's say they, they take uh, creative liberties, shall we say. <laughs> um, as I think the one thing, I, you, most candidates will do interview after interview after interview, right? Mm. So I think that one of the best ways is to keep up with the interviews that they're doing. And again, this is a technological age. Mm. So a lot of them will have Facebook. A lot of them will have Instagram. A lot of them will have Twitter. Oh, some of them even have Snapchat. They are with it. Mm. So just check their phones. I do not have Snapchat. Oh, so you're not that with it then. Mm, mm. I'm not that with it. But no. you get, you get, you get <laughs> I do not. The funny part is I used to always make the joke, my life's not interesting enough for Snapchat. Snapchat. Yeah. But then when I looked back over it, I was like, oh, I guess I could have snapped a little bit, huh? <laughs> but no, no. I'm usually working. Yeah. So I don't think, stop, let me take a picture, stop, let me take a picture. Right. So, yeah. But is that weird now that you're kind of in campaign mode and you got to kind of showcase the things you're doing to show that you're out here? So that, I think that is one of the hardest stretches for me mm -hmm. from going from working for candidates to actually being a candidate mm -hmm. um because again like i said i'm so used to being in work mode mm -hmm. um I, I do what i do because i love to serve mm -hmm. and so it's never about a photo app for me mm -hmm. and so now that is the hardest thing mm -hmm. is stopping and you know taking pictures or people wanting to stop and take pictures with you it's kind of like a bit odd i just want to help but mm -hmm. geez yeah, yeah. you know does it ever feel a bit disingenuous sometimes <laughs> um, like do you feel like it's it's solely for the op and it's not... so i never do anything solely for a picture okay that that's not me and okay. you know uh 
hopefully, Lord, please hear me, mm. that never becomes me. Um, even when I've worked in the past, I've done so many cool things, and I can barely find pictures sometimes because, or I have to get my pictures from someone else mm. because I didn't stop to okay. take a picture of cheese or pose. Um, it was very hard for me to do. Mm. And working in the last administration that I worked in, you know, they enjoyed their time together. And so because they enjoyed their time together, they would uh, – kind of, you know, when there was a little downtime where they had a break, they would stop and take pictures to commemorate the moment. And so it was like pulling teeth to get me to be in a picture. Mm. Um, so it was just like, okay, this is different for me, but jeez. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I, again, I think it's all about service. So I, I, I literally have to think about it mm. to stop and take a picture because it doesn't just come naturally to me because what comes naturally to me is working. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's, that's the tough part. Who is your biggest role model as far as um, state reps go so far? Oh, wow. Wow. You're going to put me on the spot like that? Mm, you know, had wow. to. Had to. If you're going to be up there with the kids <laughs> in the game, you got to know the players. Okay, okay. then I'm going to do this. Uh, let's do U.S. state reps. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's just do U.S. Senators. There we okay. go. Um, I, I like Maxine Waters, Congresswoman Maxine Waters. Okay. Um, I, I, I think what she stands for, her being bold and her being a voice and speaking out. Um, I actually had an opportunity to meet her, and that was an amazing experience because she's so down to earth. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, who else? Uh, I think, um, I'm going to say some, some of the newer uh Young, the, some of the newer Congress people as well. Um, Ayanna Presley, love her. I, I just think anybody that uh, that stands up and they're bold and they speak on behalf of what's right. Senator Cory Booker, I, I don't hide the fact that I'm like, yes, let's get it. Uh, I, I think there are so many names. I'm going to stop naming people um, before they're like, oh, you forgot to name this person. You forgot to name that person. Yeah, so you don't name names. So. Yeah, I feel that. I feel mm -hmm. that. So, but in 2020, mm -hmm. or at 2020 moving forward, do you think that we'll have more millennials entering office, or do you think that it's still the age of the Gen Xers? Do you think they're still the ones that are very heavily politically evolved, and we're just still in our own niche spaces, just kind of minding our own and not worrying about no, the let bigger me, picture? No, let me tell you this, and this is the thing people always like to say, those darn millennials, those right. darn millennials, the thing they don't understand, I think they sleep on us. You know, I think they don't understand just how aware of things we are and how ready we are to make change, you know, and how ready we are to kind of take the reins and show the world that, you know, we can be different. We can do things differently. I, I think the thing that I love the most about the fact that you have so many millennials and so many millennials that are willing to enter into office, I think we usher in a generation of be who you say you are and do what you say you're going to do. So I'm really excited about that. Um, That's what you preach. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. If you say this is who you are, then actually be that. And so that's one of the things that I appreciate about it. I think that I think we're coming up. I think we're slowly, because a lot of our movement was social media. And you know, let me tell you what I love about that is because I remember one time I was a little girl. Um, and it was this, uh, do I have time to tell you this lunch school oh, story? I was in third grade. And I remember the school lunches was a big thing, and everybody complained and fussed about school lunches. Mm -hmm. And so at the time, I kept saying affidavit. I don't know where I even got the word affidavit from in third grade. <laughs> it's not called an affidavit, by the way. Yeah. Um, it's a petition. But I, I told the kids, I was like, if we sign this affidavit, we write down that we don't want to eat this lunch, and we hand to the lunch ladies, they have to give us something different. Mm -hmm. Because I came from an elementary school that taught us to be politically aware. Mm -hmm. So be careful what you teach children, because they just <laughs> might apply it. Yeah, they will. Uh, and Quick, so fast and in a hurry. I, I wrote this letter to the lunch lady like oh we we do not like the school lunches we will not be eating them you need to provide us more lunches or we're, we might have to go in a different direction with lunch ladies kid you not um so the kids signed it and they're all like who's gonna give it to her who's gonna give it to her nobody want to give it to her so i said i'll give it to her so i gave it to her um a couple hours later i'm at the lunch room eating lunch and my mother worked at my elementary school oh, okay. i'm what sitting up? there and i'm eating lunch next thing i know my mom goes come here and i'm just thinking hmm? and she's like come here so I go, and I'm like, I'm thinking, I'm walking up to her thinking, what did I do? It's like, I didn't do anything today. And so my mom goes, did you hand this to the lunch lady? I was like, oh, yes. And, so mom, <laughs> and she said, well, why? I was like, well, mom, the lunches are really bad, and the kids don't want to eat them, and so they shouldn't have to eat them, and they need new lunches, or she shouldn't work here. My mom looked at me, took the note, ripped it up, and said, girl, I'll make your lunch. Go sit down. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get your own mom out of here. So, mm -hmm. so no, my, no, my mom wasn't the lunch lady. No, but, yeah. but you know, the lunch lady told my mom. mom yeah. And so my mom said, I'll make your lunch. Go sit down. But at the time, it was just one of those things where 
it, it's okay to care. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Even when it doesn't directly affect you. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, what were we talking about? We were talking about millennials. <laughs> you got to cut that part. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about millennials taking over the but space. But yeah, so, yeah. And, and so I think that, and so, oh, that's where I was going with that. Okay. In that, in that, I said, and I told my mom, we got home later, and she gave me this big, long speech about having to apologize to the lunch lady. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, fine, you know, I'll apologize to her. And then my mom looks at me, and she goes, uh, the revolution will not be televised. Go to bed. And so now, fast forward all these years later, not only is it being televised, but it's being tweeted. It's being Instagram. Instagram. It's being Facebook. It's being Snapchat. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, I kind of look at my mom. She's not here, mm -hmm. just in case she does see this interview. Respectfully. The revolution is being televised, mother. So, <laughs> yeah. You can see, and I can see all of all it. All of it. So, yeah. <laughs> My hair look good. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> My close up, they got, right. the, they got the light on me, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> so, I, and I think that's the cool thing about being a millennial is because you had those other generations where they were saying, oh, nobody will see it. And with us, we're like, not only will you see it, you will hear it, you will know it, you will feel it. Mm -hmm. So, that's one of the cool things about being a millennial. That kind of leads to like an interesting question. Are we sharing too much? Do you think, like, you know, back in the day, you could make a mistake. It wasn't, you know, plastered all over social media. Mm -hmm. You know, a year later, it's in the back of everybody's memories. Nobody forget, forgets about it. I think the dangers of that is, and I always joke about this on my show, mm -hmm. Whose Opinion Is It Anyways, that sometimes we're bad biosphere projects. Mm -hmm. And so what that means is humans sometimes forget to be human and allow others the space to be human. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is, yes, you might have had a viewpoint 10 years ago and you shared that viewpoint. And in those 10 years, you're a different person. Mm -hmm. And, and now mature, fast forward, absolutely. Yeah. And you've had a chance to be around different kind of people. You've had a chance to change your viewpoints. But what happens is now you come up, and for whatever the reason, at the same time that we're the generation that it seems like we want to usher in love, I got to be honest, sometimes it just seems like there's a lot of hateration going on sometimes. Mm -hmm. Haters going to hate. Yeah. And so they'll bring up something you said 10 years ago, and it'll stop you from being able to host the Oscars, or it'll stop you from, you know, having your product move or sell like it was. And even though you've changed your mind, Said and you don't think like that anymore. It's hard for people to forget because so it's I, an archive. It is, and that that's another thing. It's like once it's out there, it's out there, and that's mm -hmm. the crazy part. So I, I always caution people to be careful with what they share, with what they say. You know how they mm -hmm. say it, how they do it, because you can apologize until the cows come home. But um, and because people are not you, so they they can't directly know your mind, heart, and soul. Um, a lot of times people will go, you didn't change, you just wanted to sell something, or you wanted to, and I, I think that sometimes it's hard for people to give you the benefit of the doubt. So I think that we have entered a realm of oversharing. Mm -hmm. But then I think at the same time, it's also kind of given us an insight. I think with the way that things are shared, it gives us an insight on mental health. And being more mindful of mental health and helping us to deal with those kind of issues. So I think that there's always a, a, a fine balance, you know. Mm -hmm. I think in the one, again, the internet has its things where it's good, has its things where it's bad. Right. Well, Candace, I want to thank you for taking the kind time to come out and talk mm -hmm. with us. As always, anytime we have conversations, mm -hmm. it's just natural and easy flowing. So I really appreciate that about our conversation. Is there anything else you want to share with our viewers before we get out of here? Well, I mean, just, you know, the basics. I mm. am running for state representative of the 34th district. Um, you can vote early. You can vote absentee. Whatever you do, just vote for me. You can go to the polls <laughs> January 7th. You can visit CandiceMachat.com, C-A-N-D-I-C-E. M U S H A T T dot com mm -hmm. to get more information on my platform mm -hmm. um, to volunteer or to donate. Mm -hmm. Nice. Well, I'm glad you shared that information with us. Best of luck to you on the campaign trail. It definitely interested to see what you do from here moving forward for mm -hmm. our city. And best of luck. Thank you. Mm -hmm.